what up though? I was about to, I had just set up to tell this story, set up all my lightning and everything. And it's been storming. This should have knocked the nigga power out. So I'm in the dawn chilling one day. I got this partner named Playmaker, this old school partner. He stutter every time he talk. He got a real bad stuttering issue. He's not in my dorm, but they call him child one day. I'm sitting at the gate, or not at the gate, at the window inside the dorm. And I see him escorted over here to my dorm. So I'm like, what the hell going on? He got all his property with him. Old school dude, he missing a couple of teeth in his mouth. Bald head dude, skinny. Probably about 50 some, mid 50s. So they come over here to the dorm. So my dorm going out for child and they walking him in. So the officer asked him, you going to child? You going to child? So he like, nah, I'm straight. So he step in. I'm like, playmaker, what's up, folks? So instantly I dap him up and then I reach for his bag to help him because he got two bags in the mat. I reach for his bag to help him. He like, oh, appreciate it, nephew. So he tell me what room they say he going to, but that room full. So we take him to another room. The cool dude that was in that room. So I asked him, I'm like, damn, Playmaker, what the hell happened? How the hell you leave your dawn? Kind of this dawn. So Playmaker is the DR lady assistant. So basically what that means is he's an orderly. He works a regular job with the DR lady. So the person that writes you up. So basically, let's say, for instance, I cuss an officer out. They pull out their DR slip. They write me up. They drop it in a DR box. Him and his detail lady will go pick it up out the box. He'll carry it back to her office for him, blase, squase, and then she'll process the DR. So he said one of the gang member dudes over there had caught a DR, a failure to follow, and he was trying to get a visit, but they was about to put him on visitation restriction. So he told Playmaker, to get rid of the DR, like throw it out or whatever Playmaker do to it to make it not valid no more. Playmaker told him it gonna cost $100, but I guess Holmes didn't wanna pay $100. So Playmaker said, bro tried to use his gang affiliation as a tactic to like scare him up. Like, nigga, you better make that goddamn DR disappear. I don't give about no $100. So Playmaker was like, shit. He told him he'd try to do it, but it ain't no guarantee. But Playmaker told me that was cap. He didn't even try to do it. He knew for a fat dude was going to get convicted of the DR simply because, shit, he ain't give him no money. He like, bro, I'm not doing that for nobody for free. Hans had tripping. So he say when the dude got found guilty of the DR, him and his gang bros, Pushed up on Playmaker, put him on the door, pulled out the candy bars on him, made him leave out the dorm. So they moved him over there to my dorm. So we found the maroon, we put him in the room, everything was smooth. I'll probably say later on that day when they came back from child, Playmaker come up there. Like I told y'all, he be stuttering real bad. So he like, he like, uh, 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 say, see, Bill. I'm like, yeah, what sound, Playmaker? And at first, I think in the very, very, very beginning when I first ever heard him talk, I think I might have chuckled once, and then the shit just wasn't funny to me no more. Like, I never laughed again after that, because I know, like, this is really how bro talk, for real. So I'm like, yo, what's up? So he was like, shit. If you, like, he'll be talking good for a minute, then the stuttering will just pop up out the blue. So he'll be like, if, <laughs> if you know anybody who got a, DR, and they just got it. $100, I get rid of it. They'll never hear from it. So the benefit of having somebody like that is nine times out of ten, whenever you get a DR, no matter what it is, usually, if it ain't nothing too crazy, just regular DR shit, you usually get 90, 90, 90, which means 90 days store restriction, meaning you cannot purchase anything off the store for 90 days, 90 days phone restriction, which means the phone that the prison provides, you cannot use it. Your code not going to work for 90 days, which, man, so many damn cell phones. Don't nobody give a shit about that. No way. And, and 90 days visitation restriction. 
So stoke call, phone call, visitation, your family, whoever on your list can't come see you for 90 days. So that's usually, you know what I'm saying, depending on what you got wrote up for or whatever. So people be trying to wag and avoid that, especially that stoke call. That stoke call is most important. Don't nobody really care about nothing else for real. So he like, shit, you know, anybody who got a DR, I handle it, but I want $100. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I had this homeboy named Lauderdale. He was from... I guess Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We used to call him Lauderdale. And bro used to do a whole bunch of jacking, bro. Like, I'm talking about any female work, he don't give a damn. Any officer work, he's going to try to squeeze him one. And he was like a crash dummy. Like, you could go let him know, like, hey, we got something new down there. But go try out. Go see what's going on. He just used to love pumping the pickle, I guess. He didn't give a damn. He loved to choke the chicken. So, one day I'm sitting there chilling on the range. I was smoking a Chris Brown CD. This girl that was working, this little Puerto Rican girl, she really didn't give a damn. Like, she used to have time. She would let people jack. She would come in there and count. Nigga be in there smoking. She did. She just didn't give a damn. She was like one of them people like, I'm doing my job. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm on the top range smoking the Chris Brown CD. I know this girl don't look at me twice. She ain't said two words. So I see her jump up and she moving quick like she running in the dawn. So I hurry up, put the Chris Brown CD down to my side. But nine times out of ten, when an officer do that, it's one or two things going on. Either they saw some crazy going on, like some violence, and they running in, or they saw somebody jacking, and they running before the nigga try to run and hide. So next thing I know, she make it in the dorm. The door pop from the other side where we at, where we could see it at. And a lot of them come walking out of there. Next thing you know, she pop in through the front door. She go to looking through the glass. So she run around to the side to where the door is. She see him walking up. She like, yeah, you nasty little dick shrimp dick bitch. Don't be motherfucking pulling that little bitty ass shit out on me. You nasty bastard. Y'all niggas act like y'all so desperate because y'all ain't around no females. Y'all niggas act like y'all just got to pull y'all dick out. And that motherfucker be so little. Don't ever disrespect me like that again, bitch ass nigga. So a lot of them go to laughing. A lot of them busting out laughing. Man, there's so many other people in the dorm that started laughing. They thought that shit was just oh so funny. Usually whenever a girl come in and like put a dude on blast, because that's the first, listen, bro. This is just reality. That's the first thing they're going to say. Oh, you little shrimp dick. They're going to say that, bro. You know what I'm saying? You could be done put goddamn, you could be done show them goddamn Hawk Hogan 3000. And they still going to say, oh, that little shrimp motherfucker. So whatever. Whenever they come in there talking like that, it always be funny. Niggas always get a laugh out of that. So, um, you know, I had already spread the word or whatever. So Florida, so a lot of them pull up on me one day. He like, hey, bro. I'm like, what's up? He like, shit, bro. You think you can get that DR gone? How much you said it going to cost? I say, shit, they're going to run you 150, my boy. So he like, 150? I'm like, shit, it's up to you. But see, what a lot of them was scared of is they had this rule. Well, I don't know. I ain't never really seen it happen personally on nobody, but I heard about it my whole bit. They say, if you catch so many B-11s, which is a jacking charge, that they'll charge you and make you register as a sex offender. They'll charge you with a sex crime. So that's what he was scared of, because he had like five of them already. So he was like, hell no, nah, I'm scared of goddamn if I catch another one. So he shot me to 150. I shot Playmaker 100. I capped 50. Playmaker came back from work like two days later. He said, hey, tell your boy he good. I said, who? He said, such and such with the B-11. He said, I got hold of it today. I threw it away. I said, shit, all right, that's a bet, my boy. So Playmaker is the type of nigga that he don't mind if something on your face. Like, he don't get no fuck about that. He don't care if, like, because he low-key. You know what I'm saying? So basically, of course, instead of running around telling everybody, yeah, I could do this. I can handle the EDRs or whatever. He let me run around and do it because he know I'm a cap some. He don't care. He rather just deal with one or two people, you know what I'm saying, versus dealing with the whole camp running to him with all their problems and shit. This other dude push up. He like, hey, Bill, 
I'm like, yo, he like, man, you said you got down, could get the DIs gone some type of way, ain't it? I said, hell yeah, why well, was sound? He said, bro, you know, I got down, was on a tier, and it ain't been six months yet. So if I go back, they sending me straight back. So I think they had this rule where they say, if you go to the tier program, which is between nine months and two years behind the door, if you go there and then you come back out, if you go to the hole again within the first six months of being out, they send you right back to the tier program, no matter what you go back for. So he was like, bro, you know, I was on the tier like two months ago. He like, bro, I just caught a DR for, uh, I think it was like something had to do with a tattoo gun or some shit like that. He was like, I need that DR to disappear. I was like, shit, it's going to cost you 150 So he like, damn, 150 So I'm like, yeah, so... While we sitting there talking, Playmaker just so happened to walk in. So I'm like, what the hell going on, Play? So he like, shit, sh- 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 man, just, 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 chilling, bro, chilling, bro. Trying to stay away from these suckers, bro, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get me some money, man. I'm like, shit, it's a play right here for you. So he looked over there, bro. So I was like, shit, I told bro, your ticket, 150 I just threw that out there real fast. So Playmaker don't fuck around and say that $100 shit. He looked at me when I said it. He already knew what time it was. He knew I was capping. I was trying to jug me $50. I said, I already told him your fee was 150 bro. I said, but shit, he said he got a DR about having contraband or whatever. He trying to get rid of that motherfucker. So Playmaker asked him, what's his real name? Like, what's his first and last name? So dude told him whatever. So Playmaker was like, shit, this is how my shit operate. Now, he had already told me this in advance. So even with Lauderdale, I had already told him this. And anybody that I talked to, I already had told them this individually. He said he's going to try 100% to get the DR thrown out. If he cannot get it, he'll give you half of your money back. Only half because, you know, the effort he put in, he's still risking his job. So shit, that's still half that he deserves, you know what I'm saying? So he explained that 100% to bro right here in my room. So bro, like, all right, that's a bet. So he come back from work. He said he didn't see it. He went back the next day. He came back. He came straight to my room. I'm like, yo, he like, I tried. I tried to get that DR thrown out. He said, but she got to it too fast. He said, the only time I could really get that bit thrown away is, 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 if I get to it first, he like, but she fucked around and got to it first. It wasn't nothing I could do about it. He said, so, 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 so I got bro half of his money back. You know what I'm saying? So since he paid 150, he got to give him 75 back. But he told me whenever it's a split like that, I need to put 25 back in it because he putting 50 up. I need to put 25 up. And I mean, at the end of the day, it was still a free 25 for me. You know what I'm saying? So we did that. And uh, you feel me? He told me, like, just holler at bro for me, whatever. So I called bro there. I'm like, hey, give me your cash. I'm like, bro said he couldn't do it. But he goes 75, he sent it back. So he like, nah, hell no. Nah. What you mean 75? He like, I sent home 150. I'm like, yeah, but she, he tried. And for him trying, that cost you half. If he can't get it done, then he send you half back. He's like, man, hell no, nah, I need the whole thing back. Hell no, nah, he got life fucked up. I'm like, shit, he told you that before you sent the money. Gee, you agreed to it. You know what I'm saying? This is a civilian, but he got some type of ties with the bloods. I don't know what he got going on, but he always with them and shit. So he like, man, hell no, nah, bro. I ain't paying a nigga to do no half. I said, so the, so the risk that nigga took. Going, sneaking through that lady paperwork, could have got caught. You don't care nothing about that. He said, I don't get two fucks about that. I said, well, shit, bro, this the 75 he told me to give you. He was like, shit, you can just hold on to that. I'm finna get the rest of me. Oh, hell no. Nah. So he shot out the room. Playmaker wasn't in the dawn. He was out somewhere. He fucked around, came back. Uh, little dude pushed up on him ASAP. I hear him talking loud. He like, hey, what's up, huh? You got down, try to have CB and give me half of the money back, nigga. You trail, nigga. What's up with the rest of that paper? 
So dude kept walking. I was standing on the rail. He kept walking. He was like, man, I already told you, bro. If I can't get it done, I give half for the money back. He like, no, I ain't no motherfucking half for the money back. You're going to have to come on with the whole thing, bro. Your ass tripping, bro. You tripping. So I guess bro walk off in his room or whatever. So bro go to pacing around the big floor. So the bloods walk up on him. They're like, what's going on? What popping, dog? What popping? Like I say, he's not a blood because they don't do his security. And I ain't never seen him throw up a gang sign. But I think he just, he, he got some type of ties with them somehow. So they're like, what pop it, dog? What pop it? What the fuck going, dog? The fuck going? What these niggas talking about, shout it? So he, you know, explained what just happened. Him and another blood dude walk up to there to me. Walk upstairs to me. They like, hey, CBL. I'm like, yo. He like, shit, bro. You can scroll that 75. He was like, but shit. I'm saying, what you got going on with Buddy? You got some type of ties with him or something? Because we finna go press him for that other 75. I say, yeah, nah, that's my guy. He be handling shit for me, bro. He be holding shit for me. You feel me? Like, he really take care of business for me, bro. Y'all can't just run down on him, just do anything to him. You know what I'm saying? So he like, shit, what we gonna do about the rest of my money? I say, folks, he told you before you sent the money. I was standing right there, G. He told you you're only getting half back. Why is you trying to act like that nigga just tried you or something, folks? I said, man, your ass tripping, bro. He been told you that. So one of the blood dudes was like, I'm saying, so he told you that shit to your face that you only getting half back if he can't work the move? So he like, man, uh, shit, uh, to be honest, I don't even know, bro. I don't even remember what buddy was saying. You feel me? The only thing I heard was he going to be able to handle the business. So the blood dude was like, well, shit, it ain't no more talking. He got to come on with that paper. So I'm like, hold on, bro. You feel me? So I'm just telling him, like, bro, how the hell y'all going to? Just do playmaker like that, bro, when he's not in the wrong. Y'all ass tweaking. Nigga act like they don't give a fuck. So I push over to my partners. I explain the situation to them. I cap them down and tell them. And I, I think I sleep felt bad for old school, bro. It's just like, I know that man ain't doing no bullshit. Niggas just trying to take advantage of it, bro. Because had that been me... Had that been somebody younger, somebody he feel like a really gave him, gave him a real run for his money, he wouldn't have been trying them like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? That nigga would have, okay, okay, he would have just went along with it. So I told them, you feel me? And I told them I kind of capped them down a little bit, and I told them Playmaker be holding shit for me. That's how I be keeping my phone secure. That's how I be keeping my pack secure. That wasn't the 100% truth, but it just was the fact that, come on, man, I fuck with this old man. I don't want these niggas doing nothing to him, you know what I'm saying? And I know if I didn't say he been holding stuff for me, they wouldn't have cared, you know what I'm saying? So they was like, shit, we could push up on them folks and feel me, let them know, like, ain't nothing going on, you know what I'm saying? Man, while we in this room talking, having this little meeting, I hear, oh, shit. Oh, shit, Sibyl, Sibyl, Sibyl. Now, pop out the room. I know Playmaker voice. It was Playmaker voice. He's screaming, Sibyl, Sibyl. Oh, shit, Sibyl. Now, look out that damn room, bro. It's the dude, the civilian dude, and another blood dude. Bro, they chasing this man around the dawn with the candy bar, bro. Now, I shot down there by what Playmaker was at. Y'all niggas tripping. Y'all niggas tripping. So when I went running down there, you know, all my guys come running behind me, even though they calling my name, like, telling me chill out. They running behind me, so it looked like we finna engage in some serious business. So the rest of his people, they ru rush over there to where bruh and the other blood dude that playmaker, like, jump in the crowd with us. I'm like, bruh, y'all that tripping, man. I don't know. I already told y'all, nigga. Hey, me and bruh got something going on. He not going on no dough. Ain't no nigga doing nothing to him, huh? Shit, nigga, you got half of your money. Uh, shit, that, he already explained it to y'all on how it's going to go. Bro, we not finna be doing that. You know what I'm saying? We are. That's one thing we are not finna do. Y'all ain't finna just play it like that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ass trip. So, you know, it's a whole bunch of back and forth. He say, she say. But eventually they chill out. You know what I'm saying? They chill out. They went on about their business. And um, Playmaker started rocking with us pretty strong. It was still a few of my guys that... <laughs> didn't really like him or they felt like he was manipulating us on some shit like he playing so cool 
to get the protection of us or whatever the case. But I knew it, you know, or at least I felt like it wasn't nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, the situation where Playmaker almost got pulled out with the candy bar. Just about some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you know you wrong. You know that man explained that to you. And that's why I stress, bro. It's best to just do the right thing. Stay out the way. Stay out the streets. Don't get caught up in the situation, bro. You got to go through something with a nigga. Cause niggas is just stupid nowadays, bro. It's your boy Bill. I'm gone.